It's in him we live, we move, we have our being. What is God's name? What is God's name? What is his name? Clap your hands and call him Jesus. Oh, yeah. I just came to tell somebody the Lord will make a way somehow. I said somehow. Hallelujah. Somehow, somehow. Hallelujah. All my help. All of my help. Am I in the right church here today? All my help. All my help. Comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Each of you. We're certainly glad you're here. You crowded into this room today to worship and praise the Lord, to hear from the Lord. We certainly bless you, you that crowd around your televisions in the various institutions and places where this service is being piped into or shown by way of television and radio, heard by way of radio. God bless you. We want you to know we're praying for you. All of you that are bereaved and sick, all of our shut-ins, God bless you. Look up today, for God is still in the blessing business. He is still our healer. Amen. He is still our healer. And I do want to remind you of our annual hour of thanks on Thanksgiving morning at 10 o'clock. The annual hour of thanks at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning. Meet me here in the cathedral at 10 a.m. Let's enjoy the Lord as we have done down through the years before we eat any food we ought to come and tell the lord thanks amen. amen we ought to come and sing the songs of zion and give god the glory don't forget thanksgiving morning at 10 a.m everybody ought to pack this room again and tell the lord thanks amen, amen. it's worth it that our thanks is worth it amen. realizing all that god has done for us amen, amen. god bless you and certainly want to bless all of the saints that are here from Lively Stone, St. Louis, Missouri, our good friend and brother Bishop uh, Scott, Bishop Alfonso Scott is the pastor, succeeding his great dad, the late Bishop P.L. Scott, who uh, went on to be with the Lord, pastoring that great church in St. Louis, Lively Stone. Let us say amen for them and for all of our visitors, saints and friends, we're glad to have you. We certainly want you to feel welcome here at Greater Grace Temple. Just reach over and touch somebody and say, I'm glad to see you today. Amen, Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Down through the years, uh -huh, God's been, everybody ought to say it down. God's been good to me. Yeah, hey, down. God's been mighty good. Woo, thank you. I just rose to tell you that God really been good. Oh Lord, uh -huh. I said all of my. Why don't somebody help me say all of my life, children all. God's been good to me. Woo, thank you. I'm 
Somebody ought to touch somebody and say, I know that's me. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. I know that's me. Thank you, Lord. Again today, Ephesians chapter 2. I come back today with the same message. But God. Yes, sir. Who is rich in mercy. From the fourth verse, for his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Catch that. <laughs> Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Jesus or Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Praise the Lord. But God. But God. This passage keeps coming back to me, especially in view of all of the things that are happening today throughout the universe. Shocking things and things that cause us to wonder. God is still in charge. And I'm thinking today about how much the Bible emphasizes here God is rich in mercy. You pray for me here a little while. Rich in mercy, an abundance of mercy inexhaustible supply of mercy and all of us are the recipients <laughs> of God's rich mercy we live here in a world that likes to dictate our moves and how life should be lived but God's word is the answer. And I want to use that subject today again. Jesus is still the answer. When we live in this life, we must remember that it is life under the dictates of the prince of the air. Here again, we are sometimes, uh, we are, we look at it like Paul looked at it very real in his day. But we look at it like today is not so real. The ancient world believed strenuously in demons. They believed that the air was crowded with these demons. That there was not room to insert a pinpoint between them. That's the way they thought about demons. There are spirits flying everywhere through the air, says one scholar. And we are in the midst of all of these. 
The air is the house of the disembodied spirits. Spirits don't have a body, but the, 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 the actions of the spirit is throughout the universe. And you can't see the spirit, but it's here, and you can see the works of the spirit. And when we look at this, they were out to propagate evil and to frustrate the purposes of God and to seduce man into his own evil ways. They were out to ruin the souls of men. The man who is under the, uh, the, the domination, under their domination, he is a man who has taken his side against God. You're allowing the spirits of the age to, to come against, uh, uh, to come into your life. It is certainly uh, being taking the side that is against God. It is a life which is characterized by disobedience to God. It has many ways of revealing his will to men. He does so by conscience, but the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking within, within us. He does not by giving us uh, men the wisdom and the commandment of his book. He does so through the advice and warning and the rebuke of good and godly men. But see, there are men in this world who live the Christless life. Thank God, they takes, he takes his own ways. He goes about the way he wants to go. And that way is against God. And sometimes, even when he knows what God's way is, he takes his own way. He knows right from wrong. He knows good from evil, but he decides, I'm going in my own way. It is a life which is at the mercy of desire. The word for desire here is epithunia, the Greek word epithunia, which characteristically means the desire for wrong and the forbidden thing. We in this life, all we want, as far as the lower side of man is, that that is forbidden. That's what makes us children of Adam. Adam was seduced by Eve, who was seduced by the serpent to eat of the fruit. And I think I'm in your Bible. I said Adam was seduced by Eve, and Eve was seduced by the serpent, and the serpent was seduced by the evil spirit. He could not resist with all of the trees, my God, in the garden. And God said, help yourself with that one tree. <laughs> you got all the trees around you, but there's one tree. And Adam, being so close to Miss Eve, uh, he, the devil didn't come to him. He went to the weaker vessel. Went to Miss Eve, and she said, well, I think it'll be all right, honey. And, uh, and he did eat. She gave it to him because Miss Eve had something there. That, 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 well, amen. <laughs> but he succumbed to the idea of what Miss Eve said. And he ate. And any time we succumb to the idea that, 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 and that desire that's inevitably wrong, we come to disaster. He never would have been put out of the garden if he had never ate from that tree. One of the tragedies of the 19th century was the career of a scholar named Oscar Wilde. He had a brilliant mind. I hope you pray for me here. He won the highest academic awards and honors. He was a great writer, brilliant writer, and won the highest rewards in literature. He had all the charm in the world. And he was a man whose instinct it was to be kind. Yet, he fell to the temptation of unnatural vice. Came to prison and disgrace. Hmm. 
when he was a sufferer for his fail or his fall, he wrote in his book, De Profundus, he wrote and said, the gods, the small G-O-D-S, has given me almost everything, but I let myself, catch it today, be lured into the long spells of senseless and sensual ease. Tired of being on the heights, I deliberately went into the depths in search for new sensation. What the paradox was here uh, is in the fear, the severe thought is perversely became to men in the, in the severe, the, the, the sphere of passion. His passion brought him to a point where he could not cope, thank God, with society. He said, I grew callous of the lives of others. I took pleasure, thank God, where it pleased me and passed on. I forgot that every little action of the common day makes or unmakes character. And that therefore, what one has done in the secret chamber, one day or someday, cries aloud from the housetop. Lord, I wonder y'all listening today. I ceased to be Lord over myself. And when a man cannot master himself, he is headed for disaster. Hallelujah. Lord, help me. Somebody ought to say, Lord, help me to master myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, I, I ceased to be Lord of myself. I was no longer the captain of my soul and didn't even know it because I was so involved. Look at it. I was no longer the master. I allowed pleasure to dominate me. I ended in horrible disgrace and desires a bad master. And to be at the mercy of desire is to be a slave. Hallelujah. None of us want to be a slave to anything. Hallelujah. A slave is not his own. He has to do whatever. And desire is not simply a fleshly thing. It is desire. It is a, a desire or the desire for anything forbidden. And you know what we shouldn't have is what we always want. Well, Paul, what did you say about it? I see in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. My God, I see in my flesh. I, I see there's a war going on in my mind. For that that I want to do, I don't know how to perform it. And that that I, I, I don't want to do, every time I look around, here it is, here it is, here it is. Oh, wretched man. Lord, help me. You might not shout today, but let's get here. Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? And I think, I think we will shout after a while, but God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo, my God. Look at us here today. The life here is something that we must be uh, careful to understand. For Paul here means by the flesh and the sins of the flesh. We've got to understand what he means. He means far more than fleshly and bodily sexual sins. For you read in Galatians 5, chapter, nine, chapter 5, verse 19, and right on down, Paul says here, he lists some sins. And he says uh, here, he starts with adultery, truth. He starts with fornication, adultery and fornication. But he goes on to list idolatry, hatred, wrath, strife, envies, seditions, heresies. Lord have mercy. The flesh is the lower part of our nature. The flesh is that part of our nature which gives sin a bridgehead and a point of attack. Hallelujah. The meaning of the flesh will vary from person to person. One, man, one man's weakness may be in his body, and his wrist may be sexual sin. Another man's sin may be in spiritual things, and his wrist may be pride. 
Another man's sins may be in earthly things, and his risk may be unworthy ambitions. Another man's sins may be in his temper, thank God, and his risk may be envy, in envies and strife. All sins are of the flesh. Let no man think that because he has escaped, thank God, the, 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 the grosser sins, as we call them, of the body, he has avoided the sins of the flesh. Just because you've overcome sexual sins and bodily sins, that's a, don't think that you've made it or you've got it made because there are other things Thank God that are looking at you and I just like the sensual passions of our body. Thank God the flesh is anything uh, in us which gives sin its chance. It is human. It is a human nature without God. And the human nature without God is always saying, you can have it. You can do this. You can do that. You can do what you want to. You can live like you want to. You can say what you want to. You can go where you want to. You can be what you want to. You can do, and you can do, and you can do. But there's something on the inside that says God is there. There's something on the inside that says no. There's something there that, that wants to bring you back. And the flesh is saying, no, no, you can go on and do whatever you want to do. But listen, I want to believe God today and to remember that God is still in charge and remember that God says that my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure my God we are struggling here I want you to know we're struggling here y'all amen everybody I'm looking at is struggling amen you're struggling with the with the flesh amen and the Bible says he that in the flesh cannot please God when you live in the flesh amen you can't please God you can't live in God's way Amen. That lower nature, the worst part of us wants to dominate our lives. Do you hear me? I say the worst part of us wants to dominate our lives. Amen. And it is, the, it is life which is deserving only of the wrath of God. Praise God. That evil and all that stuff that comes, amen, it is nothing, it deserves nothing but the wrath of God. And there is many a man whose life is embittered because he feels that in this life he has never had what his talents and gifts and his work deserve. That may be so, but the sight of God, in the sight of God here, there is no man who deserves anything but condemnation. Amen. You don't deserve nothing but condemnation. If God treated us, catch this today, as we deserve, there would be nothing but condemnation and punishment for the best of us. My God, my God. It is only his love in Christ which has forgiven the men who deserve nothing but punishment from God. Amen. Men who had grieved him and his, had grieved his love and had broken his his law and deserve nothing but death, hell, and damnation. But God, Woo, thank you, Jesus. Why are we sitting here today? The only reason we are here is because God, but God, I want to tell every child of God under the sound of my voice, you haven't got nothing to boast in. You haven't got nothing to brag about. You have nothing to puff yourself up about, but God. And every morning you get up, you ought to say, thank you, God, that I am not victimized. Oh, hallelujah. My God, I feel like preaching today. I want to I wanna say a lot here. Amen, because I want us to understand. Amen, that the first thing the sin does here, amen, sin always uh, creates the feeling of estrangement from God. Amen, it, is, it creates uh, the feeling of estrangement between God and us. Amen, and whenever a man realizes that he has sinned, he is oppressed with the feeling that he dare not approach God. And you see, that's something we always got to remember, that the devil is always trying to bring up our past. Amen, the devil always trying to bring up what we used to be. But you see, I want to read here from uh, the 6th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that the unrighteous and the ninth verse shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. My God, I don't know where y'all think we came from. We wasn't dropped out of the sky. And such were some of you. If you see anybody sleep, you wake them up and say, you used to be. Amen. But you thank God today that you've been delivered. Amen. And such were some of you. The devil wants to bring up your past. The devil wants to talk about what you was yesterday. The devil always throwing up to you what you used to be and what you'll never be. But you can tell that devil you are alive. For in Christ Jesus, I have the victory. In Christ Jesus, I am an overcomer. My God. Hallelujah. When I look at this thing today, you know, and I got to bring this in about the great star. Amen. In the sports world, in the basketball world, Magic Johnson, with whom have dominated the news these last few days since Thursday. Amen. Have dominated the news because he had tested HIV positive. And you know, look, the young man has a personable, lovable, likable person. I met him personally in Kansas City some years back. Praise the Lord, being a roommate of one of our members, Brother Carl Johnson in Michigan State. I mean, I, I reiterated to him that he and Carl were good friends. Met him in Jabal, way down there in Kansas City. Very fine young men that, 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 that were personable and that respected seemingly all kinds of laws and whatever. And our kids and grandchildren look up to these kinds of people because of their God-given sports ability. Praise the Lord. And then when he tested the other day uh, for this HIV positive or tested positive in this way, you know, the world is shocked and people that admired him like myself and others, yes, we are shocked and whatever because of this. But you know, in spite of his talents, in spite of all the ability God had given him, he did not exercise the ability to serve God as he should. So he got, he allowed his lower nature to take over evidently and cause him to become victimized by the very thing that sin brings. Now let me tell you something, magic is no different from all of us, but God, Hallelujah. I'm a Magic Johnson, but God, you are Magic Johnson, but God, I don't deserve to stand here free of disease. I don't deserve to stand here free of ailments because I have served my Lord nature. You have served your Lord nature, but God have come in. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you all, but I feel like shouting victory, but God. Amen. Amen. I, I too deserve death. I too deserve a penalty of death. You deserve a penalty of death. And you don't just look around this room at somebody else. You deserve it. I deserve it. And if we haven't done one thing, there's another. Amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I think I'm in the right church here. Ah, yes, I'm praying for magic. I'm praying for his healing. But most of all, I'm praying for his soul. I'm praying for his wife and the unborn child because here is a human being. Hallelujah. That came out publicly. I admire him for coming out. Amen. And letting everybody know, yes, I have wronged myself. Hallelujah. And I'm praying and I've been to church. I've been on my knees. I'm glad for that because I want to see him come out all right. I want to see him saved. I want to meet him in the rapture. Said that God healed me. Y'all don't hear me. I want to meet him there. See, I know that's what a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all so saved and sanctified and speaking in other tongues until you think you've got a domination on heaven and ain't nobody going but you. But listen, God's got a reason for everything. And there are folks that ain't even come in here yet that you will see them in the rapture because they're coming in before it's too late. Ah! Oh, 
hallelujah. Can I preach like I feel you? Oh, hallelujah. You ain't been no innocent. Hallelujah. Innocent person here. Oh, God. No, I can't agree with the philosophy of safe sex. Ain't no such thing except the Bible says that every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. That's what the Bible says to avoid fornication. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But all of these superstars, they're not lacking for women. They're not lacking for attention. And they're weak. Oh, yes. Girls are flocking around their lockers, uh, waiting for them on the outside gates. Uh, hallelujah, pulling at them from every angle. Uh, fine Coca-Cola shaped, uh, heavy bosom and bottoms and all kinds of colors and hair. Uh, and all kinds, y'all ain't gonna help me here. And all kinds of women, uh, all kinds of races and nationalities. Uh, and my God, a man uh, with the Holy Ghost, he's got a time. Uh, y'all don't hear me. Uh, a man with the Holy Ghost, uh, when certain pressures put on him, uh, he's got to call on God. Uh, now, what about one that don't have the Holy Ghost? Uh, he will fall to all kinds of temptations. Uh, and sometime with the Holy Ghost, uh, one will fall to the temptation. Uh, but one thing about it, uh, when he got the Holy Ghost, uh, he can come back to God uh, and say, you are rich in mercy. Uh, I am most... Uh, you are rich in mercy. I thank you for your grace. You didn't bring me here to lose me. You didn't save me to go for me to go to hell. You didn't save me for me to be a failure. And I thank you. I praise you. I magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to talk about what we know here. Yeah, my heart goes out for everybody. Praise the Lord. And we got people in this room that have tested HIV positive. Amen. See, you don't never know who you're around. Some have come to me, coming in out of the world of drugs, coming in out of the world of homosexuality, have testified to me. I feel you should know because you're my pastor. Hallelujah. But I'm praying that God will take care of me. I'm praying that God will heal me. Hey Amen. I have to tell them, child, since you've gotten saved, you just claim your victory now and leave the rest in the hands of God. I want them in the right church here today. My God, we are fighting here. I say we are fighting for that our lower passions don't take over. We are fighting that we can maintain that place that God has placed us in. Hallelujah. We are fighting to survive. And, and everybody in this race today, you've got a fight on your hand. Oh, Lord. The devil don't want to see you in here dancing and shouting and speaking in tongues. He's shooting every dagger and every arrow in your direction. The devil don't want us to survive. And none of us know what we're going to come to before we leave this world. But I'm so glad today that I'm on the Lord's side. I'm glad to tell the Lord your rich mercy is keeping me alive. Nothing good that I have done. I ain't done nothing worthy of eternal life. But I I thank God for Jesus. I thank you for sending Jesus. I could have been out there wrapped up in this world of trouble. But Lord, I thank you. You're going to help me, Lord. You didn't bring me this far to leave me. You didn't bring me out for me to perish. And I'm going to bless your name. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to rest in Jesus. Looking for a better day. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Shout amen, somebody. Shout amen, somebody. Shout thank you, Jesus. Everybody said, but God. I'm going to close out here. But God, who is rich in mercy. 
See, that's the only reason we sit here. It ain't the job you got or the education. It ain't how long you speak in tongues. And it ain't how long you've been saved. But God, hallelujah. Just think about it. Some of us uh, in this room have come through the service uh, where you've been out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, uh, every Sue, Sally, and Jane. Uh, you've been incarcerated in the various institutions uh, and all kinds of sexual preferences uh, have come in your own direction. Uh, and you too could be hung up with some disease. Uh, but God, uh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad today uh, when you lived out there uh, in the world of sin when the devil thought he had you and he would never turn you loose here comes God he steps in and says child you are mine I bought you and I'm not gonna allow the devil to destroy you and listen I got news for you every time the devil try to bring up your past you tell him about his future you tell the devil say you are a lion and God is exalted ah, you a liar Satan <laughs> my God you always want to bring up your past and you know I don't like folks like that that's always trying to bring up what you used to be always trying to bring up your past trying to discredit you for what you did long time ago or what you did yesterday but I came to tell you today don't you let nobody bring up your past and discredit you forget about what you used to be and thank God right now for what you are right now you might not be everything that you ought to be but thank God you ain't what you used to be and by the help of God by the mercies of God I'm coming out I'm coming up I've got to get better I've got to be better I've got to get closer to the Lord I've got to pray more I've got to fast more I've got to get on out the service I've got to give God the glory because he's good to me I used to be an adulterer I used to be a fornicator I used to be a liar I used to be a backbiter I used to be a sissy but thanks be to God I've been washed I've been cleaned up the mercies of God have brought me out and now I'm going to praise him I'm going to thank him I'm going to bless him I'm going to give God the glory get behind me say that victory is mine joy is mine peace is mine happiness is mine glory hallelujah hallelujah I wonder I'm in the right church Ay, ay, ay. But God, but God, Jesus is still the answer. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. I said, Jesus is still the answer. Touch somebody and tell them, Jesus is still the answer. Come on, somebody. Jesus is still the answer. Hallelujah. Young folk, I got news for you. Condoms is not safe sex. Hallelujah. 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 We got to do it the Bible way or no way at all. Do y'all hear me? Hallelujah. And the statistics shows that blacks have more problem in the AIDS area than any other race. But listen, we are coming out because people are coming to Jesus. People are coming to Jesus saying, I've got to be free. Hallelujah. Come on today, church. We've got to be free. I said free. We've got to be free. We've got to separate ourselves. Hallelujah. 
for the service of God. Come on, church. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. But God, my God, I feel like running this morning. You know why? But God, y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. I deserve to be a Magic Johnson. Amen. But God, you deserve to be a Magic Johnson. But God, come on, somebody. Amen, 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 amen. You deserve to be the harlot on the corner. But God, oh, hallelujah. 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 You and I deserve to be the drunkard in the gutter. But God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I wish I was in a praising church. Hallelujah. You and I deserve to be wrapped up and incarcerated in some penal institution. But God. Oh, Lord. Have mercy today, Lord. But God. Caught you in time. Hallelujah. Caught you in time. In time. Ain't it good to just have God step in on time? Hallelujah. 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 Ain't it good to just have God to step in on time? How many of y'all knew he was on time? Did he step in right on time? Hallelujah. He freed us. Now we got to stay free. Somebody in here, I said last Sunday, felt like giving up, committing suicide. And somebody called me and said, Reverend, you didn't know who it was, but I was listening by way of a radio. And he said, today I got a new man called me on Monday and said, I got a new mind. What I thought I was going to do, I feel differently now because I found out there's hope. Can I get a witness here? There's hope. There's hope. Oh, hallelujah. But God, when I look through this room and I see how many of us have come through dangers. Oh, y'all don't <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. How many of us have been down and have failed God miserably since we have walked with him? Since we received the Lord? Come on, go with me. Since you've had the Holy Ghost, have failed him miserably, have fallen from height to lowness. But God, he didn't leave us down there. How many times did he pick you up? How many times has he forgiven your sins? How many times has he made you over? How many times? How many times? Hallelujah. Well, I see some of y'all have never committed a sin. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you in that balcony. Good old saved sanctified, never miss the mark, folks. Balcony full of them. Out of the street, and I don't sit down on no stairs with them folks because they're contaminated. And I got some of them down here. I don't sit up in that balcony because it's just a lot of weakness up there. See, I learned a long time ago where there's people, where there are people, there's weakness. Hallelujah. I don't care what church it is. I don't care what denomination it is. I don't care how hard the preacher preach and how strict he might seem to be. There's weakness. Because I came along in the era where almost anything you did in church, you got punished in their way. They silence you. You can't testify for six months. Amen. Silence you for a year. You can't preach for a year. Take your testimony. You can't sing in the choir 
for six months. Hallelujah. And you hadn't committed a sensual sin, but you've just been in something, whatever. Because if you committed a sensual sin, they disfellowship you and put your name on the blackboard. <laughs> Brother so and so, disfellowship. And on the other side, sister so and so, restored. Disfellowship two, take in one back. Restored. That was the old method of man. Amen. 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 This fellowship you, put you out. Then you repent, bring you back. But see, we discovered something here. Sometimes we put you out and you already out. Sometimes we take you in and you're still out. Amen. Amen. See, it's God's business who's in and who's out. Amen. All I can do is preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Might have to cut some of y'all uh, off this tape. Because I want this sermon out. Amen. If I have to use all this tape, y'all pardon me. But I want this message out. That Jesus is still the answer. Our young people caught up in drugs and sexual promiscuity. Amen. Not only young folks, but old folks. Hung up. Hallelujah. And you know, this that magic is talking about now, it's hot now. But it'll cool off. It'll cool off. And we men will still be creeping into every sally. Lord, I, mean, I didn't mean to say that, did I? Men will still be creeping around in the dark. Amen saying it won't happen to me amen, amen. a thing is hot for a while and all of a sudden phew, you never forgot about it because the lower passion of man calls him and he responds to his lower self don't care what god said his lower self he responds to it amen that's the nature of man that's why man can't walk close to the edge. He has to be close to God. Because temptation is great. The demons fill the air. They'll come while you sleep, brother. Amen. Give you a dream that's so real. About a sister you don't even know. Y'all don't hear me. I'm going to preach this. You wake up looking for Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. He'll give you a dream, sis, about a man you don't even know. That's the demons of the air, spirit of the age. You'll bring things to your mind that you can't even fulfill. Hallelujah. As I heard one old man say once, he said, you know, I, I didn't reach that age where my mind make appointments that my body can't keep. Amen. Yeah, man. I don't know how old he was. But his mind was telling him. Even though his body said, you ain't, you ain't able. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just telling you facts. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you get up with a mind. Get up in the morning with a mind. I'm going to do such and such thing today. And before you know it, you done sit down somewhere. Shucks, I'm tired, child. I ain't doing nothing today, child. I'm going to rest my body, child. <laughs> Amen. And the devil always tells us, why don't you? You can. Just this one time. You can. You can. Amen. Why don't you try this crack one time? So I can crack you open forever. Amen. Why don't you take this drink just one time? Amen. We've got to get to a place where we say, no, but God. But God, who is rich, he just got an abundance.
abundance of mercy. Abundance of mercy. Just rich in mercy. And that's the reason we sit here today. Because God is rich in mercy. Y'all hear me? Rich in mercy. He's rich. He's rich. You ain't here on your own merits. Praise the Lord. Anybody should feel that way? Maybe I could because I had saved parents, grandparents, all salvation right on down the line. But God, who is rich in mercy, have placed me where I am. And the devil don't like it. Amen. The devil don't like it. He don't like it. He don't like it. Yes, we pray for magic. He's an idol. He's a hero to youngsters. Youngsters are looking for role models. Amen. And every time they get somebody ahead of them, look like, boom, there's a failure. Amen. Many preachers become role models. Time they get to that place, something happens. But honey, I want to introduce you today to a role model who will never let you down. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh, bless your name. His name is Jesus. Everybody ought to call him Jesus. Keep 